we were discussing video games uh, previously yeah. and uh, decided we'd bring up some of our favorite video games. Yeah. I have a top five list. I know, Eric, you like we top five, we top ten, top uh, top. Uh, I have a top ten list. We just rank all of them. <laughs> I have it separated so I can do just five, but I also got three alternates. <laughs> I have my top five, and I have like some honorable mentions. It's, okay. A, for the most part, it's like. I wrote down every game I ever played. Gotcha. Because I haven't played every Star Wars game. Sure. Um, there's definitely some older ones that I've never played, and I'd like to maybe at some point, but just didn't get to them. Well, hey, stuff, let's so. do this. You go through your list first. If okay. you use any of that I have, I will substitute. You're just going to swap them out? Yeah. Okay. But does I that, have them ranked. Does that mess ten? up your top five, though? Like, like then your I'll number three, just you just got deleted, and now you have a number I'll switch them out. And I do want to say, too, my list is not <laughs> what's the best game. Oh, yeah. My mm. list is what did I enjoy the most? I think that's how I did mine yeah. because I will say that there's probably stuff on my list that people might expect, yeah. but also that people are expecting that's not there oh. uh, just because of my experience playing through okay. Star Wars games and stuff. So Sure. And uh, you know, also let us know in the chat or in the YouTube video later uh, what was your favorite game of uh, in the Star Wars franchise. But let's give them some options, Aaron. Sure, yeah. Um, I'll come back to the honorable mention section okay. later on, but... Number five Number for me five. was Squadrons. Squadrons, Star Wars yeah. Squadrons, a very recent game on your list. Yeah, um, okay. it's, I haven't played the multiplayer so yeah. much, but the uh, the fun I had actually flying mm. the, the ships and stuff in the story of it all and everything yeah. was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed the story that it had there sure. too. And um, I don't know, there's just something about the space travel that's always been one of my favorite things. The mm -hmm. different ships, X wings and Tie fighters and yeah. all that. And uh, while there has been like X. Uh, what was it? X Wing and Tie Fighter both had their own games, right? Way back in, I don't know how long it's been in the '80s, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, I never played those, but they're in similar idea of controlling your ship and shields yep. and monitoring all that. Sure. So I really enjoyed Squadrons, kind of having what some of my other favorite games did, but mm -hmm. it's let me change my engines, let me get rid of my shields to put more into into weapons and stuff. Yeah. Like I, I enjoyed having more of those mechanics involved in the actual gameplay itself. Yeah. Uh, I <clears throat> wish I got more into it to the point where I get really jealous. Like the guys that have the VR s set up oh, for so that fun. thing. Like why aren't we doing this? I connected my Why quest. did we do Badonka Gong and not <laughs> VR squadrons? I connected my quest into it and doing the yeah. VR aspect of it is so cool to be in an X-Wing like cockpit and like looking around and yeah. it was just really cool. Yeah, so. we need like a permanent setup just somewhere in the studio where I just have a couple minutes I can go play squadrons. Did you have a cockpit yeah. set up? Like an arcade game set up. That'd be know? sweet. <laughs> I've seen the ones where it's like a, a race car yeah. and it moves with it and yeah. stuff too. Like yeah. that'd be really cool to have like a sure. cockpit for squadrons. I mean, we got a Star Wars pinball right around the corner over here. Why don't we have Star Wars VR arcade set up? That seems simple. Sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, yes. Number four. Number four for me was uh, Battlefront Two. Battlefront Two. Yes. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Battlefront Two. Not okay. the transition there was a little weird. I think he's okay. Not the, not two as in what twenty seventeen. I think it was. Or You're talking the old Battlefront. The two. the original Tobias Battlefront Morrison Two. Battlefront two. Yes. Oh. My my favorite thing about that game was that it had um, the galactic battles. Yeah. Conquests. Um, yeah, it had the conquest, but there was a space battle aspect where oh, you would have yeah. like one like a star destroyer uh -huh. and then like an like a rebel like cruiser too, and yep. they would battle each other, and you could dogfight. Yeah, you could land inside. Land in the ships was the best. You could take out all the systems inside mm -hmm. and everything. Like that was one of my favorite things, and I played that so much. And it, it was probably because of the space combat. Yeah, but I loved how. Creative, you could be where it's like, well, let's dogfight, take out the engines from the outside, yeah. but I can go inside and take out the shield generators and stuff rather than having to shoot things outside. And it was, it was just cool to have both aspects there, and I, I like that one a lot. Yeah. But uh, also, it had a lot with like its story, Galactic Conquest kind of it thing, did. where you could like just take over or protect yeah. the galaxy. Yeah, no, you had, I mean, the storyline had Tamira Morrison, the actor, actually giving these like monologues about clones out in the galaxy and it's you know it's not canon anymore but mm -hmm. it's pretty great um when i think of battlefront 2 the only thing negative really is that i get sad that we never got that battlefront 3 yeah that was going to take everything that you loved and push it and they were going to have a storyline of a force sensitive clone that could that would have been so interesting fun. Yeah. yeah he was going to use like a vibrosaur or something like oh, that Oh, that'd be cool so i i, I it's interesting. You haven't got anything on my list yet. A lot of my list is legends. See, I didn't think I would get too much on your list, honestly. No, I don't think so. I don't um, think I think I think there's one. I think I have one 
game on my list that's on your list. Okay. And it's my number three. Number three. Which is Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order is <clears throat> not my number three. Not your number three. <laughs> but it's, but on, my it's list. on your list, right? Yes. No. Uh, it's my is, number five. This, I mean, I already had one canon game, which was yeah. Squadrons. But yeah. uh, Jedi, Fallen, Jedi Order Fallen Order is another canon game that I think introduced a really cool character. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in that yeah. kind of Dark Souls type of game, but not mm-hmm. as hard as that, too. But Yeah. But I don't know the mechanics of it, learning your powers, having information of like Order sixty six and whatever else of like you're this Jedi yeah. who lived through that and here's yeah. what you got to do. It was really cool and it added more into the time frame of like Rebels mm-hmm. and you know Inquisitors and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I, I really enjoyed uh, the story. I enjoyed the characters and I enjoyed the gameplay for it. The drama. Yeah, I like the drama in that one. I, I uh, it's definitely on my list. Um, I love separately from just Star Wars. I love what it did for gaming in general where everybody was going off into these more multiplayer loot box type of thing sure. and respawn i believe is the the name of the company that created it, right respawn entertainment um for fallen wrong? order yeah i think so either way ea gave a chance and let a single player experience get out there and it's an experience i've played it i think three times now three times. Uh, once you know on stream once kind of casual and once Jedi Master, the hardest thing. Sure. And it's, that's, I wouldn't show myself on that one. I wouldn't stream myself <laughs> doing it, but I did it. I did it. Yeah. But I uh, I love that game. I love BD1. Mm-hmm. I love uh, Gris and the ship that you have. But most importantly, I love that you follow Cal. Uh, you know, you have to, when you play a game, you have to have a reason why your character can't be you know, powered up all the time and sure. stuff. And that follows uh, a trauma of this young kid who fought through the Clone Wars and then was just kind of cut off. Yeah. So uh, I really like the story of that game. My, my list heavily features, I mean, there's experiences, yes, but then there's story and story is always my favorite. Story is a good yeah. part of it. No, mm-hmm. I, I definitely agree. I agree with all that. Cal, I think, was a great character. And yeah. just the even the little bits of customization you get, mm-hmm. it's not as big as some other games, yeah. customizing wise. But like, just kind of picking what kind of saber you want to use, get a pink and poncho, man, your colors, and yeah, all that kind of stuff yeah. is really cool. Even the ship that's not even really your ship, you yep. can pick what it looks like. You can, <laughs> you know. So. I'm, I want to say here, I'm gonna put my foot down. I am a, I am pro poncho. A lot pro of people poncho? didn't like the poncho. I never wore the poncho. I wore the poncho all I could. Think about terrible. all the great ponchos in Star Wars. Aaron, Qui Gon Jinn on Tatooine, Luke Skywalker on Tatooine. There's so many. I can list them all, but I won't because I can't remember them quite. Because you got them I, both already. As I can, <laughs> how much I love Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> That's your number three? That was my number three, yeah. Um, the next one, so like, I kind of had these split a little bit. Five was Squadrons, and I, I really enjoyed just the story aspect, and that was more of, like I think, the canon and sure. the ideas of what it added for like gameplay for flight Game combat play. and yeah. stuff. Uh, Battlefront 2, I spent a lot of time playing that one. I think yeah. childhood-wise was like, I, I really enjoyed that. Sure. Online was fun for that on the PlayStation 2 yeah. and stuff. I enjoyed that a lot. Fallen Order is another canon thing that I really mm-hmm. enjoyed. This next one isn't canon anymore. Number two. I don't know necessarily if it was. I guess it kind of was canon. I don't know. I don't even know how it's still going on. Okay. But it's Star Wars The Old Republic. The Old Republic, the MMO. I don't know how it's still they going. get to still do it, but I'm glad they do. And I Me still too. play it from time to time. But like... um. A lot of people would be like, "Oh, well, this is this is just the online Kotor," which yeah. it was kind of what it was going for. I like the 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 storylines for individual characters. Um, if you make a class for a trooper versus a Jedi, like there are different individual stories you get for that, and yep. you can be good or bad with it. And they tie in with uh, we we've read some of the books. One of the Legends books of uh, Revan and uh, mm-hmm. oh, what Darth, was the, what was the uh, other one with Darth Malgus? Yeah. Yeah, uh, called, it was Deceived. It was the name of the book. Yeah, that's it. Like, mm-hmm. they tie in with those books as well, and mm-hmm. it just it blended really well, and yeah. I, I really enjoyed some of the stories they told, and it uh, just added more stuff to, like, way, way back then. And I, I really liked that, and it was a lot of fun for me. And I gotcha. sp- I've spent probably more hours playing that than probably anything else on the list. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to spoil your number one, but is that your Old Republic era uh only on the list or do you I, go i have kotor as an honorable mention honorable mention but i have yet to play really kotor 2 oh okay the um, Sith Lords. and then kotor 1 i have attempted to play through all of four different times i didn't have an xbox originally sure. so like i borrowed one from buddy and then mm. i didn't have too much time to play it and then he wanted it back okay. 
so I didn't get to finish it there. Gotcha. I had an Xbox in the game at one okay. point, and uh, we were traveling, and it got stolen. All right. So then I lost my save file and everything there. Mm. Um, there's just there's always sure. been. I think I got an Xbox 360 and started playing it, and then my Xbox red ringed. Gotcha. So like there has always been something that has prevented me from finishing that entire game. Interesting. All the way through. Well, well. So well, while I think it's a great game, and it's yeah. probably if I was gonna be like best of types uh-huh. of games, Kotor would probably be up there just for like a lot of the. We'll stuff dive that it into does, it on my list because yeah, it's I figured that one would be on it's your. It's on list. my list. Baby. I assume so, so. But Nice World Republic, uh, <laughs> you know, spawns the Old Republic, the yeah. MMO. And uh, I've always loved when developers, you know, where people people are like disappointed that Nice World Republic three wasn't coming, and he's mm-hmm. like, "Look, this is Nice World Republic three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Sure. We have a lot of characters, a lot of stories. This is it's story. voice acted it's too, fully it's... voice acted. No, I... so much work, so much passion for something that's like this isn't this doesn't count though, mm-hmm. right? I mean, exactly. in, in the era of Disney canon, like this is like in that nebulous place of like, hey, do you really enjoy it? Yeah." That's all that matters. Yeah. Just and enjoy it. It's gone free to play, so you can play through like all the basic storylines yeah. that you want without having to pay anything, which sure. is really cool too. So yeah. no, that one is basically my the old Republic era type of game that I did the only reason I haven't really gotten into it, honestly, is just time. Like mm-hmm. my adult you know, a lot of my, my list is when I was a child and I had more time. I just sometimes it's hard for me to to work all day and then go home and also work in entertainment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? No, I get you. So uh I envy people that not only are they playing a game they enjoy for a very long time, but it's still supported. What? How many years later? Ten? Yeah, that came out I, 2012? 2012? I want to say. It was really close to around then. Because I was still wow. working at GameStop when it when Ten it happened, years so. of support for an MMO is rare, right? I mean, you, you get like the a big l- ones, right? A lot of them fail really early yeah. on. and uh, Star Wars honestly, Galaxies the, fans, they know what it's like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that was another one of uh, the Star Wars Galaxy. I yeah. didn't play that, but I've heard really good things about Me it too. and some of the stuff mm-hmm. it had. And I know there's some different ways of playing it nowadays, but yeah. they're not necessarily. Sure. 2011, someone says, too, is when oh. Stupid Tour came out. So it's been a while. Well, um, Aaron, we have one more. Leaves your on my number list, one. Which I cheated on. You cheated? And there's two in my number one. Cheater! <laughs> What? How? I couldn't decide. Which That's a me one. thing. I know. You pulled a me. I did. You can't have two. No, at number I one. You have ten. You have ten of your number fives. I'm. You're so right. <laughs> I'll go through all ten. I'm gonna have two per uh, ranking. How about that? <laughs> you're gonna do yeah. that? Number five is both of these number games. Number five is two. Um, but no, uh, I couldn't pick between these two. Both these uh-huh. are from my childhood. They both okay. kind of reflect off of squadrons. Uh, one of them is Jedi Starfighter. Jedi Starfighter, baby. Um, which yeah. is, I almost named my daughter. Addy, Addy, after Addy Gallia. Addie Gallia. She was the main character of the game. Yep. Um, instead, we went with Ayla. Uh, Who I think... was that blue guy in that game with the tentacles? He was so cool. <sighs> Man, you remember so him? Long. It's been a long time, but I, yeah. I really I want to say that. he started with an N. Yeah, something like that. But I can't remember. There's also a guy who had a, a ship um, that like had like two wings. Like It went out here, yeah. and then like these lower parts mm-hmm. that went down here, and it was a very interesting ship. Yeah. And I... I remember playing the co-op of that game. There was Starfighter, but there was Jedi Starfighter. And Jedi Starfighter, Starfighter I liked more because yeah. of Adi Gallia mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but the other game that ties with it is Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the Star N64. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Both of these are flying games. But in yeah. the N64, I played that so many times. Yeah. And oh, my gosh. I enjoyed it so much. I unlocked everything, all yeah. the ep- extra ships and everything in it. And it had its own soundtrack. It mm-hmm. didn't really rely on uh, Star Wars music, but I can clearly remember those themes. I can remember the feeling going on Chandrilla and trying to get that Imperial defector, yeah. you know, shooting little two-inch stormtroopers on the ground. You yeah, know? I know. They I were was, so small. I was always just there like was, a madman. <laughs> you had, like, little moments of, like, all that kind of stuff yeah. where you had a Beggar's Canyon race yeah. and stuff you could do, uh-huh. and there were so many things. There was did a Death you? Star Trench you could do. Now, I did uh, the Death Star Trench as a Naboo Starfighter. I remember doing as that. As a Naboo Starfighter. Yeah. yeah, the Naboo Starfighter was mm-hmm. barely in that game, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, there was Rogue Leader as well that was a follow-up to that game. Rogue Leader, which was for the GameCube? Yeah, I believe right? so. And that had, like, a, you know... Like which a, I never had a GameCube. That had like I a, never played those Oh, you never played that one. That had like a element of actually being able to be Luke Skywalker on the ground. Like you got out of the ship yeah. and stuff. But it didn't have. I thought it was a great game, but it didn't have the magic that Rogue Squadron did because I played that when I was a kid yeah. for hours. Um, yeah, that's a solid yeah. choice. Both of those I liked a lot. Yeah. That one was I played in co-op, which was Starfighter. I played that yeah. with Rick, and uh, it had a really good story. That was yeah. all just storyline. And but Rogue Squadron, I just I don't know something about it mm-hmm. just gelled really well with me. Yeah. So those were the top two and. Out of out of these, most of them also have flight combat stuff that I'm okay. like, you know what? I liked Battlefront 2's combat with yeah. that, Squadrons, Jedi Starfighter, so huh. a lot of flying. 
a lot of flying. Well, I'll tell you what, you have so far haven't really made a much of a dent. In I any didn't figure of my I would. List. So I'm interested I didn't in really your play honorable mentions. The Kyle Katarn games and stuff. Like I didn't really play any of those, so I figured those would be on yours. Kotor was kind of a hit and miss for me. Where like well, we'll I get, really enjoyed we'll get it, to but most. I never got there. <laughs> uh, my honorable honorable mentions. Yeah. Like, what I played at Kotor, I really liked. Okay. But I think part of me, when thinking of my favorite Star Wars games, was just like. I attempted it so many times that it is also a little tainted, which is why I'm really yeah. looking forward to the KOTOR remake coming out. Because okay. then I can just sit down. Yeah. I can't imagine any anything happening where sure. I can't play through it for some reason. Yeah. And I should be able to enjoy that. Like, it's your job. <clears throat> yeah. You better do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also had Force Unleashed on. Force Unleashed. Honorable mentions. On my list. Which uh, one and two both were really good. Mm-hmm. I wish they could have done a three, but... Yeah, it is what no, it is. Number two, you know, only tainted by its uh, production problems in terms of how short that game is. Mm-hmm. And I feel like number two also kind of rolled back a little bit on like enemy uh, like design. Not, maybe not so much design. Enemy, what's the right word? Uh, there's mm. not many different versions of enemies. Oh, right? okay. So they're, they're just too similar? Yeah. Like there was a less, yeah, they were too similar. Uh, but number, I have Force Unleashed on my list. So sure. I, I'll, I'll get to it. We'll talk about that we'll one more. That. Um, I don't think you have this one, Battlefront 2. Uh, which was the newer one. The new one. And mainly that one was because I enjoyed the story campaign that they put into that one. Even mm-hmm. though it wasn't super long, yeah. they didn't have any of that in the first one. Okay. And I enjoyed having that. And uh, uh, it, it, in, Ida, dang it, I'm trying to remember her name. So with an I, like Idna or Id, 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 Inda. I, I, don't, I don't remember. But she was part of, like, uh, what was it, Infernal? Squadron. Inferno, yeah. Infer- uh, Inferno. I have Inferno. her name on the tip it's of right my tongue. It's right there. Someone's going to say Eden. Iden? Iden Verso. Iden. There we go. I didn't look. <laughs> I, I looked. Versio. Shit. I, I, was very, I looked. <laughs> I was very close to what it was, and I'm just like, it's right yeah. there, and I can't quite get Inferno it. Inferno Squadron, yes. I, I enjoyed Inferno Squadron and her story and everything, yeah. um, and I, just, I, I was glad they added that in Me there, too. but I enjoyed that mainly for what they did. And also, yeah. like, at least they changed around how they were running like their their yeah. game as a whole, uh, for, for there's a win and stuff. There's also a fantastic level of Luke Skywalker in there that mm-hmm. I think is pretty magical to play yeah. play through the first time. It was a lot of fun. Yep. Um, and the last two I had, uh, one was Super Star Wars. I don't know if you ever played the Super, Super Nintendo. S- yeah, Super uh, Nintendo Super Star Wars. Sure, yeah. I, I played that when I was younger. Enjoyed those mm. a lot. Like, spinning Luke Skywalker with lightsabers I, uh, and stuff was a lot I of fun. I rented that game from IGA. When I was oh, a kid. Okay. IGA used to have Super Nintendo games I remember games them ever doing rent. renting. Yeah, the Warren's IGA <laughs> on okay. Route 60. They used to, like, I would get the Animaniacs game, and I would get Super <laughs> Star Wars. And every, like, week we would go, I would just pretty much just get it again. So no one could ever play Super Star Wars but Cause me. Because you kept taking it. Yes. <laughs> but it was so, also an age that I didn't, I, w- I wasn't obsessed with, like, getting through a game. I just loved playing it. So I sure. would play, like, the first level, like, 50 times. Was is the one? I don't know which one it was, but there was a land speeder where you were yep. jumping, yeah, <laughs> on the sand trying yep. to get in missing rocks. I yeah, remember great that. Stuff. Um, and then the last one I had is not really a Star Wars game, but kinda in a way. Interesting. Uh, Soul Calibur Four. Ah, oh, I wanted to guess, but I never would have got it. But yeah, <laughs> uh, Yoda and Star Killer. Yeah, and computer. Darth Vader was and in. Vader. It was depending on what you played on. Uh, I think who you had in it. I think PlayStation had Yoda and like yeah. Xbox had Vader or something, but they both got Star Killer. Yeah. I think Yeah, you're right. But it was just cool to have those characters involved in that Soul happened Calibur. with Link from Legend of Zelda. In the GameCube as well. one, yeah. Yeah. So huh. I just thought I'd mention that as being a, a something I thought was That's really a good for Star Wars mention. and stuff. So yeah. All right. Well I'm gonna go through my list. I'm gonna go through kinda quick because you mentioned some stuff. But I'm just gonna I'm just going to go from 10, Aaron. You got from to cheat. From 10. You got to cheat. I added cheat. one extra, and then you asked for my... That's why you asked for my honorable mentions, huh? Number 10. <laughs> my number 10 is Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Uh, in terms of a movie tie-in game, mm-hmm. there is Revenge of the Sith, and then there's The Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, and Return of the King. They are the, the top echelon of tie-in games for me. Okay. Um, Revenge of the Sith... They went to Nick Gillard, the the you know the the, the sword master choreographer of the prequels. You know they went and a lot of it's motion captured. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is uh, you know just expanding that movie. But I can't tell you just the how much fun I you have playing Anakin Skywalker going through the Jedi Temple and boss battle with Syndralic. You sure, know it's yeah. just so cool that the guy that came up with these moves for the movies is a boss in the game. I've always loved that. Um, and then that game is just, uh, you can see a lot of, uh, specifically Hayden Christensen's personality in the movements because mm. he was a gamer at that point. Okay. So he went up to these developers and he's like, okay, so 
I want this to be my idle stance. And they'd look at him, <laughs> they'd be like, okay. And it's like, and I want this to be my, you know, my soft attack and this to be my heavy attack. And they would be like, okay. And then the guy's like, so I had completely different ideas, but I can't say no to Hayden Christensen. So they just put those <laughs> movements in there. Those at. So like, there's some kind of stuff in there where it's like, I never remember Anakin like coming at people like this with his saber straight down, right? And like using it like as his guard stance. Hmm. But Hayden Christensen wanted it. So you gave it to so him. So they did it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty so cool. So I, I, uh, that's, I've, uh, I've never played never, that one. It's a g- fantastic game. I hope people uh, can go back and watch. I don't know how they can go back and play it. Play it. But at like the very PS2 least, there's some something really something cool think, cut right? scenes. There's also an alternate ending where Anakin wins the fight. Hmm. So really cool. No, I think I played at one point an episode one game. Yeah. But I never played the episode three game. Uh, I got uh, episode one Jedi power battles as an alternate uh, on here. Don't think that was it. Is that not the one? There's a lot of episode one stuff. Yeah, I feel like I went yeah. through the ga- the movie of yeah. episode one in the episode gotcha. one game or something. So, but it was it also wasn't the Obi. There was like an Obi Wan Kenobi game. There was on the Xbox. Yeah, I never no. played that either. Me either. <clears throat> uh, I'm jumping in number nine. This is Star Wars Bounty Hunter. <sighs> That's another one I never played. It was on the GameCube originally. It I think. was awesome. Uh, Zam Wessel as a supporting character. Okay. You get to actually, uh, you get to, you like, you get the fire spray ship, you know? You, yeah. You are in a contest with another Mandalorian called Montross, and whoever wins this great hunt that's being put on by Count Dooku mm-hmm. becomes the clone prime, right? Okay. So it's a really cool tie-in, legend story now. So the, but, whole, the whole game is based mm-hmm. on who's going to be the clones? Yeah, yeah. Uh, really fun uh, gameplay, exciting, being able to utilize a jetpack in a yeah, game. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, very much enjoy. I think they did a remake, not a remake, but a remaster of it and release it again uh, here not too long ago. So I haven't picked it up for 15 years, but I feel like it, came it out left on, a lasting impression on me. I feel like it came out on GameCube initially and then mm-hmm. eventually came out on like PlayStation and stuff, but I, I don't remember the dates for yeah. that. But. Gotcha. Uh, number eight, <clears throat> Star Wars TIE Fighter. It's one sure. of the classics. Um even though it's not necessarily something that I played when I was younger, I kind of like when I decided that I wanted to just absorb Star Wars more. One of the things I did was okay, what are like the best games that ever came out, and mm-hmm. actually go look up. So this is a this is on my list not because it's necessarily something that I personally loved, but because it's that good as a video game. So gotcha. I'm throwing Tie Fighter on there for people that are fans of that game. So have you played it at yes, all? Yes, I okay. have played the game. It's very very fun. Um, uh, it kind of mixes in my memory with some some of the other squadron like games that we've played. Yeah. You, you already mentioned Jedi F- Starfighter. I really like these old PC games called Rebel Assault mm-hmm. and then Tie Fighter as well. I played a lot of PC games when I was a kid because I really just had Nintendo and I had PC and that was it until maybe I got a PlayStation Two like yeah. towards the end of its life. Okay. So. Uh, my next one, number seven, is Star Wars Republic Commando. Oh, man, what a game. Because this game felt unlike a Star Wars game, more than any other sure. Star Wars franchise game. But the full, you know, it's pretty much, it's the proto-Bad Batch. Yeah, there's yeah. not very many first-person yeah. shooters in Star Wars uh-huh. as a whole, I think. So I yeah. think it stands out because of that. Yep. Um, but yeah, having a team yeah. is really cool, too. Uh, Tamira Morrison voicing the main captain of, of the squad of uh, uh, Delta, I believe mm-hmm. that's what they were called. Uh, but... Even though, like, the, the story of that game is Legends, we do see Delta Squad show up uh, in the Clone Wars very briefly. And then, uh, and then we then, had some characters in the Bad Batch yeah. that are starting to show up, too. So I love that. But my biggest gripe about it is it ends on a huge cliffhanger. Mm. And we never got to see what happened next. It's like another game that yeah. I think is on your list. Yes, it is. My number six is Star Wars Rogue Squadron. We've already covered Rogue <gasps> Squadron. It's but a good one. Uh, again, like, I just so many memories of... of the Battle of Hoth and all, yeah. all that You're stuff. always taking down so, ATATs yeah. or flying through the Death yep. Star and all that stuff, and it was always so much fun. Yeah. It was like the first time being able to do that for yeah. me as a kid. I know. And I'm like, I get to do this. And the feeling of uh, being part of a squadron. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, you know, Jedi Star- Starfighter, you, you're you with other Starfighters, but you kind of feel like it's more Star Fox. Whereas, I, much as I like Star Fox, sometimes the other characters, I personally don't feel like I'm part of a squadron as opposed to being told a story. Mm. But in Rogue Squadron, I feel like I'm Luke who's, Leading newly, the who's newly the lead of these these group of rebels. And uh, that's a really special game for me. Uh, number five is Jedi Fallen Order. We already mm-hmm. covered that. So I'm moving on to number four, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64. <sighs> Shadows of the Empire was so good. I had so much fun with that. I think it's my favorite 
first real Star Wars game. I had played games before that were Star Wars, but this was the one that like hooked me. Dash Rindar. It's the Battle of Hoth in that game. It yeah. opens the game. It's still, for me, for my money, it's the best Battle of Hoth. It's, I know that there's other stuff that came later that looks better, but that feeling of playing that of that first level and then going into Echo Base mm-hmm. and fighting off Wampas and just learning about the story. Uh, I played that when I was a kid, and then it was years later that I discovered that that game was actually part of a multimedia campaign. Yeah. So it had a book, it had comic books, and it had a video game. And each segment, much like The High Republic, each segment had a different medium that it was telling different stories. Yeah. It wasn't the same perspective yeah. of Dash Rendar. You had like uh, yeah. Boba Fett over here. Yeah, Boba stuff, Fett. You, know? you had yeah. the, the train uh, level, and you fought IG-88 mm-hmm. at the end of it. Um, yeah. You know, you go into the sewers, and there's Dianogas coming at you. Um and it brought yeah. in uh, uh, Prince Zizor. Prince Zizor, yeah. Which was, yep. I mean, he was only really a Legends character, but he was an interesting character. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it's the first time I remember anything Falleen being, being around. Yeah, I mean, it was made Wars, for that. You know? I always like, some people call him Shizor, there's Zizor, Exior. Yeah. I don't know. I've heard it a million times because most people just read it in sure. a book yeah. or on the 64. Well, on that, they it was all text, right? Yeah. I don't think there's much voice work in there. I don't mm-hmm. remember who. If there was voice work, I don't remember them really saying it. So I think I, mean, I, I just Prince remember Dash Rindar's like <laughs> when he get hurt. Sure. And then like flash red. Also, that game had a uh, like two different endings depending on what difficulty you played. It, it did. On, yeah. Right. Like there was like oh, you, what happened yeah. here, and then there's like the true ending, but you got to beat it on hard. Yeah. yeah the uh, I like the I even like the space combat in that. Like uh, at the I, end when you're going for the sky hook. I want to say yes. Yeah. But I hate that ship. I hate the uh, the outlander. The outrider. Right? The outrider. I hate the outrider. It's it's t- like Falcon is already cockpit is very off to the right of the whole ship. On like purpose. the X-wing is perfect, yeah, because it's in the middle of everything it has, so it's always the same distance everywhere. But but Dash's ship is you have the cockpit here, and then the rest of the ship is way over here. Yeah, and as you're flying, you just run into shit over here. <laughs> Motherfucker, do you drive in the middle of your car? Uh, no, no, but it's you're not. off to the side. You know how wide that That's is. That's why we do it. You know how wide that is. It's it's a freighter. He it's knows what so he's doing. So wide, so wide. Uh, but no, uh, it was just it was hard to fly. The YT twelve hundred, I think, is what the name of that. We we did get remember. that ship in Clone Wars we did. Uh, with Iron Squadron. So even though Dash and I still <laughs> have hope that Dash may one day wander back in the canon, uh, we at least have that ship, Aaron. Yeah, but when you do the Death Star Trench part of that game, yep. Whenever you're in third person on the ship, mm-hmm. it doesn't put your camera over here. Yeah. <laughs> it puts it in the middle of the ship. Yeah. When you go in the cockpit, it puts you way over here. Yeah. And whatever's over Dash here is Dash Rendar's happen, better so. than you. That's what that means. All right. All right. That was my number four. Number three, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed. <laughs> now, so the first one. <laughs> yes. Number one. Um, Sam Witwer, of course, being uh, someone that uh donkey really really likes yes and i understand that we got to make sure that we are uh he might see this we don't want to make him uncomfortable is what i'm saying no we don't no we don't sam might see this sam if you're watching thank you for the force unleashed (laughs) and david collins as well uh i love that game that was the game that it was around the time where my star wars fandom was high but you know i wasn't able to express it as i am now yeah a podcast sure um I can't say enough about the uh, the feeling of power in that game, right? Like, that's the well, whole point. Especially with the opening level. Yes. That opening level, you feel powerful. It's one of the best opening mm-hmm. levels of any game. It is. It's so on my good. entire list, it might be the best opening level. You play Darth Vader, fighting Wookiees, and he can't run. You don't he run at all. He walks everywhere, <laughs> and you feel powerful. Because that game was pushing this new uh, tech, which I, it was called, like... I don't know, digital mon- molecular matter. I don't remember what it was. Exactly digital called. Mon- molecular matter. But they, matter. you know, if if wood was, be de- was to be destroyed, this is how wood would splinter. Okay. If metal would to be hit with the force, this is how it would bend. Uh, and that opening sequence, like, just pretty much utilizes and teaches you all those systems. Like, so it's one of the, per- the perfect ones. But I really enjoy the story of Darth Vader's Secret Apprentice. Uh, sure, yeah. It's hard to not talk about Force Unleashed 2 as well, but... Uh, Juno Eclipse, you know, I I love the idea of this secret Sith apprentice that, you know, he does everything Vader tells him, but Vader is not a good father, sure. it turns out. And on the side, uh, 
Galen Merrick, I think was his real name. Yes. A Galen? Galen. Galen Merrick. Uh, on the side, he's like this little boy that's like, Proxy, who's that girl? <laughs> you know? He's like, he has no social awareness. He's just a tool. And I think that's the best part of that whole thing is that this this guy, like Darth Maul, shaped to be a tool, has a soul. Yeah. And then and then Nitro and then in, uh, in Force Unleashed two, two, we have to question: Does he? Yeah. That's and that's so good. no. It, it yeah. does a good job with that character. I, yeah. And you mentioned him too, but I also really enjoyed Proxy. Proxy. Proxy, yeah. and that was a really cool uh-huh. like training, but also like it could you could do anything with it. Could, and it was really cool to have that addition. In voiced by Wars. David Collins. Yeah. yeah. So that was really cool too. Uh, and one of the cooler legends, uh, Jedi, right? Yeah. Rom Coda, who is. He was always uncomfortable with the idea of clones, so he has mercenary group uh, like around him during yeah. Order 66, which is how he survives. Really cool idea. I always felt like he was the uh, the original inspiration for like something like Kanan. Yeah. You know, we have yeah, like, definitely like just like who that character yeah. was surviving Order 66 and kind of what becomes of them and stuff. And being blinded. Yeah. Really yeah. just fits in really well with yeah. like whenever Kanan came out, they remind me of each other mm-hmm. a lot. So, and kind of teaching someone who's like, a, a needs a mentor, you know, just yeah. for Star Wars in general. And Militia, that was the word I was looking for, not mercenary. Militia, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that was Force Unleashed. Uh, again, I, I could talk about it for the whole podcast, I but we have you. to move on. Number yeah. two. Well, and then Sam Witwer, we could talk about forever, too, but yes, we just we need to have can. more. Yeah. No, no, no. I have to move on to number two. Number two. This is Star Wars, Knights of the Republic. Knights of the Republic. Number two. Um, number two? Yeah. Well, I should say. <laughs> Knights of the Republic 1. Knights of the Republic 1, uh, the original game out by Bioware, Drew Carpishian, the, the, the main writer, uh, and the story of Darth Revan, yeah. which is a fascinating game. Uh, one of my first RPGs I ever played, yeah. honestly. I would say. Because uh, I don't, I'm not much of a, when I was a kid, I loved video games, but also like I had to go farm. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have time, <laughs> you know? Anytime I wasn't farming, I was playing video games. Uh, in Nice Republic, I played it on PC, uh, on a very bad PC, my mom's PC, but I love that game so much. Yeah. Uh, and my favorite thing about it is that, you know, when people, especially the original trilogy, they think about Star Wars and they think about the reveal, I am your father. And Nice sure. Republic is one of the few games on this list that has a reveal that, no, yeah. like, that, like, it's just, like, when it happens, you're like, of course, the motherfucker didn't speak the whole time, and guess who else doesn't speak in this game? Me! <laughs> you know? What a reveal. What a great, fantastic moment. I remember the exact moment. I was sitting. My mom had a, her computer in this, like, weird, like, armoire. Mm-hmm. So you had to, like, open the doors and pull out the thing, and it was really awkward to play on. <laughs> but I remember, like, when it was, like, they reveal, you are Darth Revan. And I was like, like I don't have none of none of the games in this list have that moment, and that's a Star Wars moment. So that's why it's number two on my list. Gotcha. Number one, though, is something that I played the hell out. of. I think of. I can guess it. <laughs> number one <laughs> is, uh, well, Kyle Katarn. It's going to be the Jedi Knight. Uh, this one specifically, Star mm. Wars Jedi Knight Two Jedi Outcast. Jedi Outcast. I was trying to think of which yeah. one it was going to be, uh-huh. and I was I was like. Eh. But yeah, I can see that. It's my this, favorite game of all time. This is the one where you would like make Star a Wars Luke game. versus yep. a bunch of stormtroopers or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah, no, I, I should like you know before I get into like you know the main reasons I love it. Yeah, uh, it was the first game that I ever like got into the mod community. Mm-hmm. So I would download like a model of Vader, and then suddenly Vader's in the game, or you know I would get into the uh, the the mod hack command channel, and I could start you know I could get into a really cool area and be like, all right, I want to watch. Three Jedi, and that they appear, you know, and then I want to watch them fight three Sith, and then you can just watch it happen. And the the gameplay mechanics of this game, in my opinion, is one of my favorite lightsaber combat of any game. And hmm. the developers, to get around their rating, they really wanted realistic lightsabers. They really want shit to get cut off when it touches. Sure, but they can't do that because this is a Lucas Arts game. And we don't have mature ratings for LucasArts games, not in the star, not, not Star Wars ones. So they hit it behind a cheat code, realistic saber combat. You put that on, and suddenly a lightsaber feels like a lightsaber. As much as I love the Force Unleashed, the lightsaber feels like a baseball bat to me. Mm, okay. Except for you know when they when I you're feel actually, like a lot of Star yeah. Wars games do that. Yes. Um, even playing like in 
KOTOR, Star Wars Order Public, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like you're swinging around a lightsaber yeah. and stuff and it's bouncing off things or not yeah. slicing through stuff. And you're like, yeah. mm, all right. And as much as I, uh, you know, it also had a you know, multiplayer. It had Jedi Academy was a, a game that yeah. followed up and kind of disimproved everything. I watched Arena do like yeah. versus like 4v4s in that game sure. and stuff. And they're running around attacking each other. It was great. Yeah. That was like one of my few experiences with that game. Mm-hmm. And I, I love just to show some love for Academy. Academy had all these little like Easter eggs that like made the book canon feel more real. Like it mm. would have just like a mention of Jedi Master Corian Horn or Jedi Winter, like these other characters that appeared in the Legends books. Mm-hmm. They don't even appear in the game. They're just kind of mentioned. It has made the world feel more real for me. Uh, that was Academy Outcast, though. It's just it's a very simple story. There's a dark sider that used to work, you know, that used to be trained by Luke. His name's Dasan, and you have Jan, who is your pilot on your ship, also played by uh, the same actress that voices Hera. So, okay, I, I, Vanessa I, Marshall, yeah, yeah, Vanessa Marshall. So, you know, whenever I would hear Hera, I would hear Jan too, and I have a strong connection with that. So, um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I can straight up. I played that game fifty times. I can quote that game to you. <laughs> like, Kyle, Kyle Katarn, you're the legendary hero who destroyed Jerick at the Valley of the Jedi. You look like nothing more than a panther. Murder. And then Kyle's like, well, you look like an overgrown quake. You're monkey lizard, so I guess looks don't count for much. Hand the girl over. Oh, so good. I don't even know if you're right. I'm so right. <laughs> People right now are like, I know exactly where that is. That's right before you get you go back, Jan gets taken, and you know what, Kyle, who was given up being a Jedi, he's just a smuggler, but he's got to go get his girl. So he goes to Yavin 4, you meet Luke Skywalker, and Luke's like, I got your lightsaber, but it's in the temple. Go get it. And we go to the temple, and you learn all these Force powers. It's so good. It's my number one. All right. <laughs> There we go. I absolutely love that game. Uh, I have honorable mentions. I but I, we already gave 10. Yeah, well, I got 10. You're right. You don't get more honorable mentions. Right. You honorably mentioned the other five. <laughs> I put on my honorable mentions Masters of Terrace Kasi. I knew you Just knew to it. piss off Rick. And uh. I showed it to him this morning. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Uh. And he also said that we should stream it. <laughs> I've never played that one. There's yeah. uh, Honestly, looking at this when we were talking about what mm-hmm. games and stuff, like one of my favorite games. I, I realized how many Star Wars games there are that I've not played. You know, and there's, I there's realized how many Star Wars games there used to be, and there's very few now. There's right? Very few now. Uh, it know, was, there was yeah. maybe an oversaturation in a bit. Sure, that's how you get like Terrace Kasi and different things. Yep. It's like let's make a Star Wars yeah, fighting there game. Was you some, know, but there was some saturation, yes, but there was some gold, man. Uh, and I hope that we can get back to that. I know EA sure. had this ten year long uh, exclusivity when it came yeah. to the the franchise, well, and we're getting away from that. There's Kotor. Which, Mm -hmm. with that one coming out, I'm like, either A, they're just wanting to kind of, like, remake it. They've remade a few things. They had Republic Commando and stuff, which were more, like, ports that they were doing. Mm -hmm. Um, Even the Kyle Katarn uh, games on the Switch and stuff. But, like, either they're remaking KOTOR to do it as a cash grab of, like, let's kind of bring this back and port it over and stuff. But with it being a remake, I'm really thinking it's going to be much more of a Final Fantasy VII type of remake. Where they're really kind of revamping it Mm -hmm. and wanting to change things up. To maybe make way for Old Republic stuff, which would be really yeah. cool, because we've already sure. got, started diving into High Republic, and mm-hmm. with this not coming out until twenty twenty three, maybe we're maybe we're laying some seeds for yeah. what if Revan can be in somewhere either in the High Republic or the Old Republic or whatever we want to do. You know? ha- so. I, I'm guessing you haven't heard the Kotor news. There's Kotor. Uh, the the remake has been delayed more, okay. and some people are saying indefinitely. Mm. Uh, I don't know exactly the details because I don't want to get too close to the details. Sure, or whatever, but, yeah, you know. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear. We do have some people in the bulkhead down the the hallway in the ship. You know, this is a fully crewed ship. Sure. We have. I mean, we're not just in hyperspace. There's a captain. You know, it, it's all yeah. good. But sometimes, you know, they cram us into this uh, this little the storage you know, storage area. area yeah. You know, gonk and everything. So, anyway. Um, but yeah, the uh, Kotor news then is that it's being delayed indefinitely right now, mm-hmm. as opposed to like sometime next year. Yes. All right. No, I haven't heard that. Yeah. That makes me more sad then. So I know. That's why I waited to the end of the excitement. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Eclipse still, right? What? what? Eclipse? We have Eclipse? Well, that's also, uh, I mean. They delay that too? I mean, you, you heard about like, the, you know, apparently that guy, like, you know, he's a little problematic. <laughs> have you heard that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are we going to get Star Wars games anymore? <laughs> so the guy that uh. created Detroit uh, Become Human, you quite like that game, right? Detroit, yeah. Sure. From what I understand, his name's David Cage and, uh, uh, he might be maybe not the guy you want. I don't know. 
I don't want to. I don't want to say anything I don't know about. Man, I just want a Star Wars game. That's all I, I want. I know. <laughs> just, I wanted like the thirteen thirteen. <laughs> you know, like this uncharted idea of a Star Wars game. I wanted all these kind of things. I, I, they always cancel them all. Or we can have hope. There so. are Star Wars games in the works. Just give me something. Uh, give him something. <laughs> give the boy something. Look at him. <sighs> Look All how right. frustrated he is. I'll just go back to Star Wars, you old public. <laughs> Place for tour. All right. Well, that was a good uh, memory lane Star Wars segment. Yeah. Aaron. No, covering some different uh, Star Wars games, and hopefully we get more in the future. And I, I will say, too, because we briefly mentioned Jedi uh, Fallen Order, uh, a game that we both loved and have never talked about. Sure, yeah. Uh, we purposely have never talked about it because we thought, well, one day we'll talk about it on the channel. Yeah. Uh, and now we have a Star Wars Badonkagonk where we can talk about Jedi Fallen Order. But we're not going to do that right now. However, we will do that uh, probably closer to the release of Jedi Survivor, the follow-up. Yeah. That sure. way we can, you know. That one's not like Maybe both of us right? can replay it before that. Is that, that one no. still coming no, out? that one's good, man. We Jeez, good. We got a trailer. Me. There's a guy in a back to tank. He's got white hair. I don't know who he is, you know. <laughs> but that know. one's coming uh, soon. All right. So when that is closer to being released, we'll revisit Jedi Fallen Order. That'd be and good. do a huge deep dive into that one. Because sure. I, I got a lot to talk about when it comes to that game. No, yeah, there's a yeah. lot in there, a lot of lore and stuff that we've just never talked about. I don't think even off of camera, you and I have like, hey, let's talk about Jedi Fallen Order. You guys would be so shocked the lengths we go to sometimes to to for content. Sure. We haven't talked about something we both enjoy, that's Star Wars, <laughs> for like a year. It's been a long or time. Or two. It's been, uh, yeah, probably like three. Three. I don't even know how long it's been since that came out, but it's it been a three. while. Yeah, it's crazy. So I'm looking forward to that when that happens. 